Okay, so on to another one. This one, I don't know how I missed this story back when it broke in the day. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard about someone spending $50,000 on a ghost detector. So there was basically someone who, and this is a really famous, famous person, who claimed they were being pursued by a ghost named Ryan. And so they went out, dropped $50,000 on an electromagnetic field reader to detect paranormal activity around them. Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I am Dax Holt. Over there is Adam Glenn. We are Hollywood Raw. What's up, raw. guys? Uh, <laughs> raw. You like that? Raw. Uh, I still like today, the name. You, you, you like the name? Yeah, I still like the name because I don't think people know. We used to have a different name, correct? We did, and it was Hollywood Pipeline. We were, we were pipelining in all of the information straight to people's ears is basically what the the idea with between hollywood pipeline um and had started up a youtube page and then uh we shifted over to being coming hollywood raw which just, it really fits us it is yeah i think so i think it's a good name it's funny i was out yesterday i met this guy who was a broadcaster for mls major league soccer and i was like oh you do a podcast and he's like no you do a podcast i was like yeah you never heard of it hollywood raw and he goes i actually really like that he's like that's pretty cool <laughs> He's like, I never listened to your podcast, but I like the name of it. It's yeah, great. he's like, I didn't know, ex I don't know who you are, and I, <laughs> I asked that you stand six feet away from me, but I do like the name of your podcast. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So here's the deal: Adam has literally no idea what the hell we're doing today, which is awesome. We were going back and forth with, uh, uh, "Hey, what do we want to talk about today?" I said, "Listen, I have an idea. It's something I've been thinking about, but you're just gonna have to trust me." Like, you're going to walk into this podcast, you're not going to know what's going on, but if you believe in me and you trust in me, then just go with it. So Adam is here just going with it today. How do you feel about all this? Uh, I'm ready. I can, I'm like a chameleon, Dex. I can adapt to everything. <laughs> so as long as you don't bring in anything like too scandalous, I'm down, okay? Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm down to do it. All right. Well, we're getting on the phone with Actually, all of your ex-girlfriends today. Oh, great. Uh, hello. You made the right decision. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Let me, uh, let's read a review before we jump into this and then we're just going to go with it and you're going to fly blindly. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. This one is from Drake's number one fan, five stars. It says perspective as a title. I really enjoy listening to the stories you guys have to share. However, I think you guys should be more considerate when talking about certain subjects. I just think you should be aware, more aware that you have listeners from all walks of life and ethnicity, ethnicities and et cetera. All right. I wonder what we said that, uh, showed them that we weren't considered enough. But listen, we said we had read five-star reviews and we read it. Um, I just wish I had more context to what we were being inconsiderate about. Yeah, I think it was when you said that you... No, when... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a stupid joke. I have no idea. We'll try to be more considerate, but yet again, I don't really know what she's referring to. So yeah. All right, I'm going to read one more. Okay. This one comes from Lacey Bain, Blaine, five stars. Love this podcast. Hi, Adam. Hi, Dax. I freaking love this podcast and the content you give us. Thirsty listeners on uh, on weekly. Laugh out loud, uh, thinking about the people hating on y'all doing ads. Maybe a few more. Keep up the good work and make that money, says Lacey. Yeah. Thank you. I just wish there were more advertisers throwing money at us <laughs> so that we could do more ads. Yeah, but. no, 100%. Um yeah, this, the, the doing ads is what keeps the podcast alive. Sorry, there's not more, no less. I, I mean, honestly, we'd want more if we could, just because this is how we pay our bills. Yes, um, and but, like we've said, we we don't do the Patreon, even though we probably should. We don't beg you guys for money or anything like that. But 
if you guys do watch us, go watch us on Red Coral. It helps us. They give us more money than uh, YouTube does. So if you can, go to HollywoodRaw.com, click on the link Red Coral, and that's one way to support us if that uh, if you do want to help us out without actually paying us personally. Yeah, so we, which we're working it, we're hustling. Um, all right, so here's the thing, guys. Let's get to the podcast. Dax hits me up. Usually we try to come on, you know, every week we're like, hey, what should we kind of get into this week? And we have sometimes publicists reaching out to us, trying to pitch us our guests or pitch us their talent. Um, and then this week, Dax is like, you got to trust me. We're going to do a podcast. I have an idea, but you got to trust me, but I can't tell you what it is. Of course, I'm going to say game on, but I have no idea what he wants to get into. Um, but yeah, Dax, what are we doing on today's episode? All right, Adam, tell me right off the bat, what is the most ridiculous thing you've ever spent money on? <sighs> like, what is a purchase that you have made in your life that you're like, oh, that was beyond my spending means, but YOLO needed it? House? Uh, I don't know. Uh, man, what did I spend money on that I – that I, um, I Like, I, I am not college? a person. <laughs> 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 on this. Like, I'm thinking – like, there's only been one or two times where I went and just – didn't expect to spend the money and then I did. And it wasn't like crazy. You know, I was at Macy's once and I saw this um, Burberry watch and I just fell in love with it. It was like $700. And I'm not someone who spends a ton of money on, on anything. And it was just like, uh, I want this. I want this and I love this watch and I still wear it all the time. It's a great watch. I wore it this weekend. But I, uh, do you have any purchases like that? That you've spent hundreds of dollars on that maybe someone else would look at you and be like, that's insanity. Uh, I would say I bought some, <laughs> you, you, you kind of know what I do. I go on eBay and buy like stupid stuff, like random. That What's I mean, the most I, expensive t shirt that you've purchased that you're like, that's ridiculous? Uh, all right, you want to know what it was? It was yeah. a $200 Justin Bieber Fear of God t shirt. I got it. Wear it? uh, No, actually, it's sitting in the closet. I thought it would gain in value. I got it as an investment piece, and I've never wore it because it wasn't my size. I wonder if I could, if I looked up on eBay, how much they go for now. But yeah, I I don't wear it. Two hundred bucks on a t-shirt. So I like. I have my Argentina jersey. It's like one hundred and fifty bucks, and I'm nervous to wear it every time. Like I, I was wearing it a couple days ago. And I literally look like a two-year-old out to dinner because I have the napkin tucked into my like collar when I'm eating because I'm so afraid that I'm going to get food on this $150 shirt that I don't know how people spend tons of money on clothing and that because it's – you could ruin it so quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I do that a lot. I I, I, I mean I have some – you know, nothing too crazy in clothing-wise. I mean I did get some stuff that probably wasn't necessary, but I have – I mean, I have to say, like, I, I kind of am like a hoarder that I don't throw things out as far as clothing goes. I'm like, oh, I'll uh, I'll wash my car in those pants or I'll, I'll do that when I paint. I'm like, when, when do I ever paint <laughs> that shirt, you know? So I don't really – yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think, dude, what I like crazily spent money on. I mean, yeah. The house is obviously – a car, obviously, but – I think we are just normal when it comes to that. We're like, we're not extravagant people. And so I'm, I wanted to talk to you about some of the craziest, most ridiculous purchases that celebrities have spent money on. And then I'm going to make you guess who the celebrity is that spent okay. the money on that ridiculous item. Okay. Are you game? I, I like this. I love and this. I like this it. is great. I like it because I, I also feel like the people at home listening can also throw in their guesses. That's why I'm not going to give out the name right away. We'll talk about the item, talk about how much it costs, we'll talk about how dumb it was or how awesome it was, and then uh, I'll I'll give you an opportunity to guess who it was. Okay. All right, well, the first thing is a $52,000 purple sofa. It's a sofa. it, It literally looks like a giant, like, wad of yarn like oversized yarn so think about think about like um a big tube of 
fabric and it just is all bundled up and like thrown on the floor. All right, it's called basically a boa. It's this avant-garde piece that is basically art, but it's also a functional sofa worth fifty-two thousand dollars. And someone bought this to put, and it's a female put this into her home. All right, you just first of all, when you first told me someone bought, I had someone in my head who okay. you who I thought would potentially get this. Now you just said female, so that kind of changed it because I had a male in my head when you first told me what the item is. So go on. Okay. Uh, so basically, think of think of something that you would see in an art gallery, or that you would like. Yeah, I would say it's like an art gallery piece, but it is someone's couch. Who would buy a fifty two thousand dollar giant yarn purple couch? Yarn. Oh, okay. So purple. Uh, can we get into what level of fame they are? are they, and what I mean, are they an actor or musician or just celebrity? Or is that too I much? Would say they are. Or do you want to give me A list, B list, C list, D list? I would say they're A list. Some people are going to gripe about that, but I would say that they're A list. And I would say that they, let's say, going to give it away but i'm gonna say reality reality tv okay um man uh purple i'm gonna go with this is a weird one just because of the purchase and i know this person spends a lot of money sharon osborne oh that is a great guess that is a fantastic guess but ozzy would never be able to get back out of this couch if he sat in <laughs> <laughs> It is way too low to the floor. Uh, no, this couch was purchased by Kendall Jenner. And this Kendall was purchased J- back in 2016. And it looks like something a Car- Kardashian would absolutely have in their giant concrete house. Is it a nice couch? Like, would you be like, oh, this is cool? Or is it, is it actually like a I, usable couch or something no, that's just more decorative piece? It's full decorative. It reminds me of like a giant dog bed. You know what I'm saying? Like just yeah. super low to the floor. And it, honestly, it looks just like a pile of fabric that is on the ground. <laughs> I yeah, mean, that's just, crazy. the crazy part is like I kind of we kind of mentioned it the other day. They have like throwaway money. So the way we spend money and the way they spend money is totally different. Like they just don't even think about it. For example, I went out to like a really nice restaurant uh, and – like I like it was at Tao and I saw like what people at the table were ordering and in my head, I'm doing the math. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I'm adding everything. That's when you know you're day. poor, when you start doing the math for what they're drinking. I do the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Oh, that's two bottles of crystal, but now you're at a club. So now that's like a thousand dollars a bottle. So that's 2000 plus the table that they had to get. That's another like two that I'm like, what's wrong with me? These people oh. just have shit money. I, I'm telling you, I was at Tao Downtown, which is a very nice celebrity hotspot restaurant the other night, and I got invited there, and I actually didn't even get invited. They invited me like halfway through the meal. I was like um, – I had, actually, you know what I had, Dax? I had someone who is wealthy who wants to be um, – Your sugar Famous. Dad. They want oh, to be. They want to be bad. famous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone who's wealthy who wants to be famous, so they wanted paparazzi outside. So they paid okay. me to kind of set up paparazzi outside. I was like, screw it, I don't care. I paid the paparazzi some money, and because they wanted the photographs. But when I was outside, they're like, hey, why don't you come inside? I go to the table. It was like twelve people, and they had like a sushi table. Then they like they had like sushi come out. Then they had like the seafood come out. Then they're like, hey, you want some champagne? There's the the, the cristal coming around. I don't even know what kind of champagne. But in my head, I can't even enjoy the food because a, I'm afraid they're gonna be like, okay, you owe you owe two hundred, you owe four hundred. I'm like, dude, you guys invited me in, but I'm also trying to just do the bill in my head, and it was just. Have you yeah. ever have you have you ever had dinner and you're with someone who's got money or whatever, and you can clearly tell that they don't care and they're just ordering, but you, again, you're afraid to order. You don't order what you want because. You're ready for the bill. And then they cover the bill and you're like, God damn it. I should have got the filet. Oh man. All the time. This happened so many times and it's embarrassing. I mean, like I would have eaten so much better had I had known you were going to pick up the bill. 
Yeah, I, I'll tell you what. You know what I'm talking about picking up the bill? And again, we're going off subject a little bit. One day I get invited to – I get – you know I have a relationship with Shaq. And they hit me up and say, hey, why don't you come to – actually, it was Tao, but a different Tao restaurant. They like, hey, we're going to have a late lunch, early dinner at Tao. Why don't you come by with us before we go to this event? Like, yeah, sure. I stop in. Shaq's like, order whatever you want. I'm like, dude, just order for the table, and I'll just pick off whatever you eat. So he orders like a ton of sushi. Shaq doesn't use chopsticks. He just like is like a monster, just picks up the sushi and throws <laughs> it in his mouth. But the place was empty except there was a table of like Did 10 you people. Though, um- Imagine his giant hands trying to hold tiny little chopsticks. Like that's like someone trying yeah. to hold toothpicks in their fingers. I'm doing like the chop. I'm like trying to think of like his hands trying to do chopsticks now. And it, but he was like throwing them in his mouth like a giant. But there was a table of about like ten people from like you could tell from like the Midwest who were sitting there and they wanted to have a nice dinner, but you could just or meal, but you could tell they're sort of like wow, like. This place is, you know, expensive, you know, like they're, mm-hmm. they, I don't think they knew what they're getting themselves into and whatever, but the place was empty. And the two little girls from the table, two little boys, I forget what they were, um, run over to, Hey, Shaq, can we get a photo with you? He goes, yeah, but you got to finish your, you got to finish your, you got to finish your dinner. And they're like, okay. You know, like Shaq takes a photo yeah. with them. Then like during us sitting there hanging out, he'd go, wrote, yell to the kids like, Hey, uh, whatever, make sure you finish your food. Make sure you finish your food. At the end of our – we finish our meal before they finish their meal. He goes to the waiter goes, hey, listen, I'll take our check, and I'll take their check too. Crazy, That's right? So he didn't even want – like so it was no question. He goes, I'll take our check, and I'll take their check too. And then he goes to the waiter. He goes, um, how much you want as a tip? Waiter goes, I laughs. And he goes, no, no, tell me how much you want. Waiter goes, I, I don't know how to answer that. He goes, no, Shaq goes, tell me. How much should I tip you? How much do you want? Waiter goes, I don't know, 400 bucks. He goes, all right, 400 it is. Signs up and just gives him the credit card. Doesn't go over to the table and say, hey, I paid your bill. Just quietly does it. And like it was like no question, no nothing. And I was like, I'm sure he does this all the time and nobody knows. And it was just like, you know, that's, that's so it wasn't cheap the way he yeah. was ordering. And, but it was just like not even, you know, he didn't even consider, he didn't even think about it. And that, and that one moment, Shaq, like made that those couples life made the waiters life like yeah all of it i love this so tough okay yeah moving on to the next thing okay a mattress how much how much you willing to spend on a mattress for a good night's sleep like think about Dude. how important a mattress is in your life i'm how actually you- in the market for a mattress right now i've been kind of looking it up you want to find like the best mattress you want it's yeah. also i don't consider just buying an invest a mattress i consider it an investment because you're investing into your sleep and if you have a good sleep, it's a better you. So it's health, it's wellness. I consider mattress. So I think I wanted to go up to like for a good mattress, 1500 Okay. Well, I got someone who spent $20,000 on a mattress. And this was a custom-made Savoir mattress. And it is... One of the most ridiculous purchases that I've heard. I didn't even know that a mattress could be a twenty thousand dollar. Okay, I take that back. Unless it is custom made for again, like a shack or someone who shack, is massive yeah. that needs the space. This person doesn't need a custom made mattress. So, what makes this a twenty thousand dollar mattress? I'm sorry. Apparently, this is this like mattress company, this Savoir mattress. They are high-end mattresses that um, like kings and queens use. And so this person is from over on the other side of the pond. And so they are into the rich and fabulous mattress making. Um, This guy has made a just shit ton of money in his life as an actor. And this was one of the most extravagant purchases he ever made at the age of 22. Any guesses? Wow. Oh, man. And at the age, so the person is still 22 or they're much no, older No, this now? was, no, they're older now. But at that, just think, at that point, the age of 22, they had already made millions and millions of dollars acting. And this was one of the over-the-top purchases they spent some of their money on. I I have a guess. Yeah, I think I think you're not, I, okay. I was going to say, I, have I a think guess. you're, go for it. Daniel Radcliffe. Yes. No way. Are you serious? Yes. yes. How, Dax, I promise you, I did not Google that. I did not look that up. That is 
I, I didn't even know no. about that. I just guessed. I was like, who would invest in that? Daniel, are you serious? You know, it's funny. Yeah, because Daniel Radcliffe, to me, comes across as a very down-to-earth, not spending ridiculous amounts of money. So that's why I was actually kind of surprised about how much he would have spent on it. There's another guy who spent almost 300, uh, like $315,000 on a bed while we're in this kind of bed mattress. So $315,000 on a bed. This bed is, it comes complete with a whiskey and champagne bar built into the headboard. Okay. And this person, I think once I, you hear the name, you're going to be like, oh yeah, of course they would spend that kind of money. They are over the top. They're ostentatious. They, you know, money is no object to this person. So this person is a rapper. This person has spent millions and millions of dollars on homes and cars. So it's not surprising they would spend, you know, a, 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 what did I say? Oh, actually... 398,000. Sorry, that 314,000 was pounds. So $398,000 on a bed and have a bed frame and a mattress. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, that's... Who would it be? I can tell you this person Shall also we? had ridiculous home in Calabasas, massive waterfalls in the backyard. Um, I think they even had a a bull at one point in there, like a, one of those bulls that you ride at their home. You know, for some reason, when you're going with this, I, I was thinking in my head, share for some reason, but <laughs> I um, can see share spending crazy money on a bed, but no, yeah. it's not share. But Calabas is crazy money. I mean, my guess is just like a Kardashian, like a, a Kim, but I, no, I don't know. It, it's a, it's a rapper. So it's Drake. Drake spent, Three hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars on this bed. So it took. So I was reading about this bed. It took four people six hundred hours to make the horsehair mattress. It's from the Swedish company called Hastens, and he had actually told Architectural Digest uh, at some point that the bed lets you float because it is so well made, so well manufactured that you feel like you're floating in it when you're sleeping in it. Wow. I, I can't mean, like the, there's a cost of a house and you sleep on it. I really want to know if it, I would love to just sit on there and try to take a nap on there one day and see if it's that good. I wish they had a showroom where you could actually go and try out the bed, but they probably don't even have showrooms for these type of beds. But like, uh, what could it, if you laid on it, what could possibly make it that amazing? See, here's the thing is that I was actually, I don't think I would do it, but I, there's this thing called like a chili pad that you could put over your, your mattress and they cost about a thousand dollars and it's only like a year of warranty. So it doesn't sound like it lasts that long, but you could try out, you know, it keeps the bed cool. So you kind of have the, the right temperature of your bed mm -hmm. that that's a thousand dollars. Now with the rest of the mattress, I don't know. I don't know how yeah, you kind I of. I would pay good money to have a mattress that, like, really, you set it at a temperature and it stays, like, cool all night long. That would yeah. be dope. That would be really cool. Okay. $750,000 on gold toilets. Gold-plated toilets for their home. This, I think, is an easy... So, it's it's real gold? It's... Well, I'm assuming it had to be real gold to... It's four gold-plated toilets, so I I'm think they guess, use gold leaf to make it because that's what would make it so expensive. I would guess Floyd Mayweather. Oh, that's a good guess. No, no. Mm -mm. Um, gold. Which celebrity loves gold? Um, think about someone who just would spend crazy money on their home. Like this person is known for spending hundreds of thousand dollars on kitchen appliances. Um, they were rumored to have a Swarovski crystal encrusted fridge. Um. Again, someone who spends money on details of homes and has known to buy a lot of homes and flip homes and... Do See, now you're throwing me them. off because now I was leaning towards something like buy a lot of homes, but then flip homes, but the last flip was not working because yes, that person I think tried you're on the to... Right, I think you're on the right That person track. tried to kind of make a house in like a very ritzy area and like re like make it in like an art very artistic by re ripping out all the i'm thinking like Kanye it? west yes yep kanye was it 
Yep, Kanye poured gold plated toilets for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. This was That's, for their Bel Air home. I, so what a waste! I mean, I mean, <laughs> I would love to see what like a poop looks like in a toilet with gold. Maybe it looks prettier, but at the end of the day, I just spent like two hundred dollars on a toilet. So, um, yeah, a gold toilet. What's the but what's the benefit of having a gold toilet except that you tell there, people there is gold no toilet. benefit. There's no benefit. It's because you shit on gold. Is I think it's more of the statement of like you think back to the times when like there's kings or emperors or that kind of stuff. Like they're the ones that had gold toilets or you know. So you're you feel like I have hit this status in life where I can shit on gold. I mean. I get it, but I don't get it. I think it's very – I would put that in like your guest bathroom, not your – like in your – the bathroom that everyone who comes over is going to use. I don't think you need that necessarily in your like your bath, your personal bathroom because mm-hmm. I'm sure he has multiple bathrooms. It's such a showy piece. I just don't know what the benefits of it are and if you have to clean it more, the maintenance of a gold toilet. I mean it sounds like just such a stupid thing, but I mean – I don't know if there's retail. There's you could res. I'm sure you could resell a gold sure toilet. Maybe I'm sure you could. Maybe. I'm sure you know? you could. I'm yeah, sure there's there's, a, there's a value in it. That. Yeah, I but who know, wants someone is, else's used gold toilet? That's also gross. Yeah, I mean that is a dumb purchase in my opinion. I, I, it's so not necessary. I don't know why, <laughs> but I don't expect it. It's funny because you said real estate. I, I I was leaning towards someone else. I was leaning towards someone like Paris Hilton would maybe have a gold toilet, mm-hmm. but. Paris, I feel like when you said it has a lot of properties, I don't feel like Paris moves often. I don't know. She doesn't. You know, I feel like she has a place and she's like comfortable and she has it set up around her. Like she's just, she's Paris. So, so speaking of Paris, I, I, this one wasn't on my list, but you know, she has a $300,000 doghouse at her house, right? It's like she showed it off on Instagram before. It's this two story air conditioned, it's like a mini version of her home in her backyard. It's, insanity here's my beef with that because i remember when she showed off this doghouse and i don't know if it's so one of a kind that they just said it's three hundred thousand, so it's not really valued at three it's not really the materials are isn't worth three hundred thousand, but someone custom made it for her and they just said i'm just say it's a three hundred thousand dollar doghouse and if some other billionaire out there wants a doghouse they'll spend three hundred thousand mm-hmm. because i mean it is cool but three hundred thousand for a doghouse? It's not a legit house. It doesn't have real estate. So it's got stairs. It's got beds. You can literally stand up inside of it. It's so massive. It's got a little chandelier in there. I'm again. I'm not saying it's three hundred thousand dollars, but uh, it is like a replica of her home. So it's got like the plaster on the outside, lights, fixtures. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> I would never spend that kind of money on a doghouse, but. I mean, I wouldn't expect anything different from her. How pissed much, much, you know, would you be if you spent that type of money on your doghouse, and then your dog just never uses that doghouse? <laughs> like they just right? like, oh yeah, I'm good. Like I don't want to go. Like wait, what? Well, that's the thing. But, How often are her dogs even outside of her house? I'm well, sure they spend most of the time inside. Do you think? she actually spent the money for the doghouse or if it's someone she was doing MTV cribs and said, okay, I need something extravagant. We need to show off this lifestyle and they custom made it for her. I'm sure you're right on that. You know, like, that's let's get handed so many things for free. You know what I'm saying? So you're probably a hundred percent right. Okay. I've got to purchase. I just, but before you even go that, I just yeah. want to speak on cribs. I remember just seeing a video recently of Jojo, not Jojo Siwa, the singer Jojo, um, get yep. out right now. And she said when she did MTV Cribs, she showed a home that wasn't even hers. Seriously? Yeah. Um, it was just like again, she wanted to like shock this surprised. life. Yeah. Not surprised at all because half of Hollywood is fake anyway. So I'm sure there was quite a few homes on Cribs that were not their homes in there. They reached out to the celeb. The celeb's like, I live in an apartment in the valley. And they're like, don't worry. We're going to rent a home. It's going to be over the top. It's going to be awesome. You'll show us around. I'm sure it happens. I always I mean, said if I was a celebrity, I would never do MTV Cribs because you're showing a stalker a tour of your home and they know how to get around and they know where all the good stuff is. Yeah. I also think about it with all the like big uh, like real estate shows. You know, how many of those homes do you think are actually for sale that they're showing on those shows? 
probably not a lot of them. It's more like, okay, we need you to open up this, you know, $100 million home and show us around. And it's more just a showpiece for you to look at. But I bet if you go back and cross-reference the homes that were a big central part of the show and to if they actually sold in the last five years, I bet most of them have not. And it's just kind of for movie making, essentially, you know, TV show props. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, so on to another one. This one, I don't know how I missed this story back when it broke in the day. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard about someone spending $50,000 on a ghost detector. So there was basically someone who, and this is a really famous, famous person, who claimed they were being pursued by a ghost named Ryan. And so they went out, dropped $50,000 on an electromagnetic field reader to detect paranormal activity around them. And this was like a whole thing. They were apparently very freaked out. Um, I guess someone close to them had said this person was very terrified by the spirit. Um, but more than anything, this spirit was annoying them and wouldn't leave them alone. So they decided I'm going to get this detector to basically know if they're around me. Does this sound remotely familiar to you on who would have dropped $50,000 for a ghost detector? I don't recall the story, but I think I have a good guess. Okay. Who? okay. My guess, and based on the way they spend money, that based on the way li they live their life, mm -hmm. I think it could possibly be them. If I get this person right, I am very, very shocked to myself because I got two out of these right so far. I okay. got Daniel Radcliffe and I got Kanye West. My guess is it's Nicolas Cage. That was a great guess, but no. <laughs> that, that was a good guess, though. And you know what? I'm, I actually left off because Nicolas Cage has some of the most ridiculous purchases, like that stupid dinosaur head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like a stolen Mongolian dinosaur head. I, I left him off the list, so he will not be appearing anywhere on this list because okay. I feel like his purchases have been so covered in the past that I didn't want to give obvious ones. Uh, no, it's actually Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga... When she was on her Monster Ball tour, she would, and this was back in 2010, she was the one claiming this ghost named Ryan was following her around. And it was her backup dancer who actually had talked to a, um, or I guess a crew member who had talked to a couple uh, different outlets saying she was terrified that this, this ghost was basically stalking her. You know, here's the thing is, Dax, I realize, and it's just in a way to, to, to look at some of these high price purchases. I know some of these things are so random, like the, the couch and mm -hmm. the golden toilet. However, because a celebrity owned the the the, the piece, whatever product, whatever item it is, there is value to it. So mm -hmm. therefore, when they resell it, or if they want to auction it off, depending on which celebrity they are, there is a significant more value to it than, than of course. Well, person. the second now it's been owned by a celebrity. Now it's not just an item. It's an item owned by so-and-so. Um, but who... Like a Lady needing... Gaga Ghostbuster thing, whatever this thing is. I mean, she she paid $50,000 for it. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Now it's well, worth it $150,000. So someone else would buy it for $150,000 and she could get the money back. So she's not who, really paying the Who needs a paranormal detector? Like that's a True. very small market that is looking for... To find ghosts. Yeah. Like yeah, that's, no, uh, that's that's you, you go fuck you money right there when you can just drop fifty grand on a weird instrument. Yeah. So do you know if she liked it? Did she enjoy it? What was her vibe? With it? You know, <laughs> like no did idea. she actually use it and get its money's I, worth? I I'm pretty sure she used it, but uh, I did not hear any updates whether or not she was able to uh, cast Ryan off into the the Netherlands, and so he doesn't ha haunt her anymore. Yeah. Um, Oh, by the way, no, I couldn't I find know. a I couldn't find a price for this. But did you know Akon allegedly bought a diamond like mine in South Africa? So how does that work? And is that a good investment? I mean, Akon, I, I've well, heard of the money issues. I, I got so to imagine part of it. It's a great investment if you get a a mine that is full of diamonds. I mean, that it's. I think you're taste, taking a risk. Yes, we found a couple of diamonds here. Cool. All right, well, if I buy it and find a ton, you're going to make a ton of money. 
um, but I could not find a price anywhere. It all just said undisclosed amount, undisclosed amount, rumored to have uh, purchased a diamond mine. So I don't know how much you would have spent, but I feel like that would be a good investment. I mean, if you bought a river that was full of gold, that would also be a good investment, right? Sure. I, I, I don't know how that works. I don't know how that gold market works. I have heard that Akon has had financial troubles based on the stories I've read in the press in the media. And uh, so I don't know if maybe those troubles started from him making a purchase like this. <laughs> it seems like a decent investment just when yeah. I hear it. However, that's you're searching for gold. There's no guarantee. So, um, yeah. But if every time you enter the mine, you got to go, Akon. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Akon, very nice guy. Tall guy, too, but nice guy, too. I, Akon, I think. We don't give him his we don't give him his roses like we should, Akon. Well, you remember he helped put Lady Gaga on the map. He did. Yeah, he did. Like he was the big star when Gaga was first coming up, and he was really the one that like everyone knew. She was the side guest on his you know song, and then she blew up after that. Yeah, I don't think people give Akon his roses enough. They kind of I feel like he gets a lot of negative talk about him rather than positive talk because everyone loved Akon music and a lot of hits too. So. Okay. I've got, I've got another one for you. This was a, did you watch Shit's Creek? Part of it. I didn't watch all of it, but I watched enough. You failed at life. That was a best eh, show. It was, it was cute. so good. It was no, cute, it was, but I didn't need to watch it. It was no like, Oh my God, I need to watch Shit's dude, Creek. You need to go back and start from season one and watch the whole thing. It is the greatest show since like friends. It's, Amazing. Anyway, I've got a real life Schitt's Creek situation where there was a celebrity who spent $20 million to buy a Georgia town. And basically the idea was they wanted to turn it into a tourist hotspot, but then also turn it into like a filming location with studios and all this kind of stuff. And they spent $20 million on this town. You said Georgia. Mm hmm. My guess is Tyler Perry. Yeah, oh, that's a good guess. No. You said all oh, my guesses are good. So I, th- I think I, you're like, that, well, actually, I, feel I like, can see why you like said there's, that. Yeah, there's thought behind the guess. So I feel like it's a good guess. It's not the right person, but it's a good guess. Um, this, it was actually done by Kim Basinger. Oh, I forgot about this. I heard mm-hmm. about this. So tell me more, and like exactly. I I forgot about this story. She bought it. This was like years ago, right? Years. This was back in like the late eighties. She. This was like the height of her fame. She spent a ton of money, twenty million dollars, on this this town, and like it had all these great plans. I think that would have been really smart to start up, uh, essentially studios. It was just probably too far ahead of its time. You know what I'm saying? Because now there's a ton of studios. George is a great filming location, all of that. Um, but unfortunately, she declared bankruptcy in 1995. And this was a part of it. So I don't know if this was like the start of her money problems was dropping $20 million on a town. Wow. And yeah. so that's $20 million back then, you know, which was years ago, which... Now, if you wanted to make that type of purchase, I don't even know how much it would cost you. Um, I wonder what the value of that area is now. But it wasn't it wasn't really much about her. This was more of an investment. So this wasn't something she wasn't gonna name this Kim Basinger Town or the city of she, she made this as like a personal investment to really build up an area, correct? Correct. So this I guess the the town was Brasselton, but what if she named it like Basington <laughs> and just incorporated her name. That would have been pretty badass, but there's no way she made this purchase by herself. I she had to have like a bunch of investors with her and say, This is gonna be a good idea. I think we could really because the tax reasons start filming down here. This could be a good investment. Unfortunately, so in my mind, that sounds like such a big lift. Like, I'm gonna buy a whole town. No thanks. I'm out. For that reason, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a ballsy move, ballsy move. But of all people, Kim Basinger, like, you know, I didn't know. Yeah, that that's a pretty tough purchase. But again, it was a purchase as far as a business move that kind of backfired. So I don't really give her too much shit on this because it wasn't 
um, it was more to it was more business rather than hey, I'm gonna need to put this in my home. Yeah. Um, so all right, gets... I want to get to one last one. I have okay. I have so many more, but we're kind of running out of time. All right, someone who spent two hundred thousand dollars on a personal sonogram machine for their home. This is someone who has tons of money, but wanted the ability to look at their baby in the privacy of their home, and they can afford to look at a sonogram in their bedroom. That's pretty, that's, that's wild. That's wow. Can you imagine that's, that? That's crazy money, right? That's crazy money. Because it's, it's also like a limited time. Like you don't need a sonogram after those eight months. Like why yeah. would you need that after the baby is born? You don't. I, so this person has a lot of kids or they just did it for a kid. They did it for a kid, but they do have a few children. And when I say it, you're going to be like, oh, that makes total sense. Um, my Honestly, my first guess was someone like very recent. And I, okay. I'm sure it's just too – this has got to be an older story. My first guess when hearing this, this is something I think that Haley Bieber would do. You know, just because she's pregnant with Justin Bieber's kid, they want to have a lot of privacy. They want to be yeah, seeing they, the baby every day. Still, I feel like are normal in the fact that they go out in public. They would be seen. I don't feel like she's someone that wouldn't go to a doctor's office and be seen. This is someone who is so reclusive, they won't want to leave their house. Because they're that famous. Uh, I'm you, the second I say it, you're going to be like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Oh, man, this is going to get me really mad. All right, you got to give me a clue here. Can you give probably me one, one clue? Of, is this the last one? This is probably one of the most famous. This was because of one of the most famous celebrity children on the planet. I'm guessing Michael Jackson, but yeah, who? That Good guess. Very good guess because he is reclusive, but it was actually Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise wow. and Katie when Surrey, when she was pregnant with Surrey. Doesn't it make wow. sense? Because you remember how like secretive that whole thing is? I also there I have my own conspiracy theories about that whole thing, whether or not Tom is actually Surrey's dad, and whether or not she was born when they said she was born. All of it. I have a lot of conspiracy theories when it comes to the birth of Surrey, but I think they wanted access where no one could contest their birth timeline, their uh, anything about Surrey's birth. Like, wow. what better way to cover up any type of news than to have your own sonogram at your house? That is just a wild thing. Think about a sonogram, too. You you don't just like turn it on and put the gel on a belly and just start seeing like you it's an instrument to see what you're seeing. You still need so you have to have a, you, you have a technician that comes in. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What that, that to me honestly, Dax, of all the things you said, I think that's the craziest purchase. That's yeah. the craziest of purchases because it's just like so random and so. Insane. Do you think he like? Do you think he like resold it or is it just? in his attic collecting dust at this point. I, I have to imagine they must have dumped it. They must have donated it to a hospital. I think he would, not he or she, at that time, they might maybe donate it to the Church of Scientology. Mm. So like, what are you going to do with that? Babies. Like, honestly, it's one of those things where it's like, all right, just get rid of it. I said, I don't want to see it anymore. So yeah, Get it out of the house. Man, to have your own. That is a wild, rich person thing to do. <laughs> So it's Am I right? all right. Well, that was that's what I had for you. So if uh, if you hated today's episode, go ahead and email pat at herdat.com. <laughs> let them know that uh, you hated today's episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, Dex, the, I was actually surprised. I gave good guesses, so I'm proud of myself. Honestly, mm -hmm. that's what I might do next week do a trivia thing with you, and we'll do our own game show where Pat <laughs> is the game show host and me and you compete against uh, trivia. Um, I like it. Uh, I know. So against celebrity trivia, that's what I think they should do. They should do a celebrity, a more celebrity driven 
um, pop culture. Instead of all these like, access Hollywoods and extras, more mm-hmm. of a pop culture, celebrity driven game show. Okay. I feel like That's I've seen a couple times where, you know, there's like a game show. Hey, we're doing pop culture. All Who knows you the most about celebrities? I'm like, I mean, I feel like I should go on this, but then I would also be really embarrassed if I got nothing right. And I'd yeah. be like, how did I not get any answers right when I've all oh, this is all I've been doing for the last 20 years of my life? Some people are really good. And it's not just like, I know, I know we're gen- journalists that cover it, but some people, I say just random folks, just they recall they have a very good memory when it comes to this mm-hmm. stuff. Their timeline is amazing. Uh, but guys, thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on Red Coral, check out Red Coral. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, check out our page there. But Red Coral is where it's at. Uh, we're on TikTok, Instagram. We have a private Facebook group called Off the Record. You guys should be in it because it's a really, really fun community. Follow me at Adam Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holtz. We'll see you guys next week. Happy Fourth of July. Bye. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.